Good morning, fellow YouTube viewers. Belch94 with the uh, WDC19 keynote for 2019. We see new products like iOS, watchOS, macOS, Introduce, iPadOS. Now it's easier than ever to do with what you love. And with for our professional users, it's the all new Mac Pro and XDR display. Now let's have a quick look. So iPhone introduces a new dark mode. Um, as you can see here, you'll see the iPhone, it'll go dark. Uh, when the lights go, you can control it to turn it on at certain times of day. Um, you get upgrades to the camera, so you get a portrait lighting control and high key mono. New photos tab, so you get a new tab for like years, month, days, so it's been fully redesigned. Uh, redesign editing, so you can, so you can control and do, uh, basic video editings, flip to crop the videos in when you do video. Privacy, we've got new privacy settings, so you can sign in on certain websites with uh, Apple ID. You've got HomeKit. HomeKit now adds supports for uh, security cameras. Uh, Maps has been completely overhauled, so you can get a look around, you get a 3D look around the city. You can tap on um, buildings to get uh, information of the shops, and you can add favourites of your homework, school, and favourite uh, shops you like to go to. Add collections of where you want to visit on your next vacation. Siri has been completely redesigned, has a new voice, which I'll quickly play for you. Absolute zero is the lowest limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale, a state at which the enthalpy and entropy of a cooled ideal gas reach their minimum value, taken as zero. So we'll close that. Siri Shortcuts has a new shortcut app. You can add personalization on the HomePod. You can now announce messages on AirPods. Uh, auto sharing with Apple with with AirPods, so you can do have two AirPods connected to the one iPhone. Yeah, and emojis and messages, you can new emoji customization with hats, um, beards, makeup, headwear, you know, emoji stickers. Share your name and photo. Quick path typing, as you can see there. Reminders has been completely redesigned as well. So it has power. You can use has powerful Siri inter integration into it as well, as you can see here. Quick toolbar, smart links, CarPlay has been completely redesigned. New interface, as you can see here. New calendar app, new music app, uh, performance. It adds um the image titles. iOS 13 has better performance to iOS 12. For example, Face ID unlocks 30 percent faster. Faster app uh, launched. Saying Apple saying that it will launch two times faster, so much more. But it all depends on your version. You get up arcade voice control. Voice control's been completely overhauled. So for someone that has like dis has hard issues using an Apple product, they've made it more easier for you to use. Text formatting your mail, new and improved notes, um, a new personalized health app, improved start pages in Siri. Uh, uh, the files up has been completely redesigned. AR Kit Three support, uh, font management. You can change fonts. Sm uh, smarter ways to share. The interface for that has been changed, and there's all your compatible devices. So you pretty much need um, an A9 chip and higher, pretty much um, for the the iPhones and iPod Touch. And we'll go back. We'll have a quick look at the Pad OS. So it's been that has been completely redesigned, has its own operating system, as you'll see here. Um, so it's while it's built on the same foundation as iOS, iPad has become truly an extinct experience with powerful apps designed for large multi-touch displays, multitasking, simple with into just as the ability to drag and drop with fingertip has been magical. Now it's called Pad OS. Has a new slide over in split view, multiple apps in slide over. As you can see here, keep all your favorite apps at the ready in slide over. Apps in multiple spaces. Um, app exposed. So it, iPads always had these features, but in this version, it seems to be more refined. It's a lot better. Um, new home screen, pin widgets, as you can see the home screen here. Apple Pencil. So they've improved the support for Apple Pencil. New tool palette. You can drag and drop wherever you want it, shrink it. Um, full page markup, capture a screenshot of an entire page, document or email or mark it up, 
to make notes. So it's perfect for the uni student. You can use Sidecar and Mac OS so you can turn your Mac, uh, your iPad into another uh, sec secondary monitor and use the and do um like use touch ups with the Apple Pencil. Text editing. So you can edit gestures, copy, paste, undo with a simple new gesture. Three finger pinch as you saw there in that clip. We'll slide over and I'll show you some more. See? And it's gone. Cursor navigation. Pick up the cursor and drag it where, precisely where you want it. Multi-select. Quickly select a block by dragging of text by dragging your finger over it. Integrated text selection. Keyboard. Floating keyboard, so you can pinch the quick keyboard and move it to wherever you want for one easy one hand typing and more room for your apps. Quick path typing, type by swapping from one letter to the next. A keyboard shortcut, to navigate the web in Safari and manage your files faster with a lot of new keyboards and shortcuts of physical keyboards. Fonts, fonts management, so you can choose your fonts in certain applications. Files, file app has been completely redesigned, overhaul for the iPad, redesign file apps, collaborate on files and documents with shared folders so everyone in the loop. You can connect to a file server so you get to those work get to get to those work files from a server or home PC right from the files app. Connect so this is the first time I've had you can connect hard drives. Connect external hard drive, SD card reader, and yes, even a USB drive. About time, so we might be getting the I'm assuming we might be in lightning to USB adapter for the older generation if they get it. Browse the internet on iPad is so immense, it's like holding web in your hands now. Powerful new features make Safari on your iPad OS a desktop class experience. You get desktop class browsing, download manager in Siri, dark mode, so the iPad does get dark mode. Privacy and security, sign in with Apple, as I showed you before in um, HomeKit, secure video, which I've also shown you in the iPhone section. Photos, an all new photos tab, it's also been redesigned as you can see here, slightly different layout on the iPad. Redesign editing, powerful video editing. So I feel finally the iPad, especially the newest iPad, it's finally getting used to its to its strengths because it's a very powerful device it wasn't getting the software was limiting it performance iPad has always been fast but with Pad OS you'll notice everything's a little faster faster on lock faster app launch that, so it's set, comparing it to I, iOS 12 and even more so you get App Arcade voice control AR Kit 3 a new voice for Siri it's one of ways to share more useful ways you look at maps custom emojis and messages and all new reminders app Text formatting and tools, new and improved notes, auto sharing with AirPods, and handoff to HomePod. You get a whole list of the features, and here is what's compatible. So you need um, an A8 iPad or higher, so you can get the iPad Air 2, iPad Air 3rd generation, um, iPad Mini 4, iPad Mini 5th generation, iPad 5th generation, iPad 6th generation, 9.7 inch iPad Pro, 10.5 inch iPad Pro, 11 inch iPad Pro and 12.9 inch iPad Pros. So all 12.9 inch are supported. So Watch OS. So Watch OS doesn't look much different, but they've added new watch faces. Follow your activity trends over time. Discover cycle tracking shop for shop for apps from your wrist and with Watch OS 6. You get more insight into your health and fitness along with some delightful surprises. See, let's have a look. So more insight for more delightful. So activity trends, cycle cycle tracking, hearing your innovations, the app store on your wrist, watch OS six gets you you get the insides insides you need to stay healthy and fit and more updates surprises to make you fall in love with App Watch all over again. So you get new watch faces. See more at a glance, go deeper. Tip, tick tock, tap talk. Um, enhance Siri. What song is this? Question, question anything. 
the app store. So this is probably the biggest update to the watch OS is you can now you can now have your own app store which you can get you can download apps straight to your Apple Watch, which is before you had to use your iPhone to do it over a Wi-Fi connection. So you can see the app store, discover new apps with barely lifting a finger. Audio books, the last chapter in Apple Watch. Uh, you can have a calculator, voice memos, and redesign reminders, which will come in handy, especially for. I can wear it and do YouTube videos, voiceovers. Um, you, you can now get the emojis, and emojis or emoji stickers. New ways to stay motivated. Activity trends. Um, your latest trend fitness. Keep pace over the long run. New ways to keep an eye on your health. Knowledge knowledge is healthy. Tracking is simple as tapping, as you can see there in that. Where are you in, in your cycle? Hearing health. So when it goes to 11, take 5. Noise. If it's too loud, you can feel it. Your data is also Apple Watch unlocks many powerful personal experiences while keeping your private information on the lock and key when you back it up to iCloud. So a more personal health app for you, for you, for a more, a more informed you. New developments for developers. WatchOS compatibility. So any watch that is running uh, WatchOS 5 will get this update. So WatchOS 6 requires an iPhone 6S or later with, watch OS, watch, with iOS 13 or later and one of the following Apple Watch models. So you'll have to upgrade your iPhone first. So we're going to have a look at the new macOS, macOS Catalina. Um, dive into... Into music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV apps from macOS Catalina. Enjoy more of your apps you use every day now on your desktop and extend your workspace by using an iPad as a second display. Show them. So macOS Catalina. Power of Mac taken further. macOS Catalina gives you more of everything you love about Mac. Ex experience music, TV, podcast, all all new Mac apps. Enjoy your favorite iPad apps now on your Mac. Extend your workspace. Expand your creativity with Apple, with iPad and Apple Pencil. Now discover new features in apps you use every day. Now you can take now you can take everything you do above and beyond. So, music, TV, and podcast take center stage. I so iTunes has officially been retired. So anything that was in your iTunes library is still accessible in each app. iCloud sync seamlessly syncs in, or you can back it up and restore and sync by connecting your device directly to your Mac. Presenting Apple Music on app. So that's the Apple Music. So that's the Apple TV app. So pretty much your Apple TV interface on your Mac. Podcast app, so this is where you get all your podcasts. These apps you'll have right on your Mac. So, these are iPad apps so that you can run on your Mac. So you've got Asphalt 9 Legends, DC Universe, Jara, Tripit, Fender Play. Some of these apps I've never used. Apps you use every day made extraordinary. So that's the photos app. It's been redesigned again, similar to iOS with month, years, months, days, all photos. Focus on your best shots. Notes, easier to find, easier to share. Reminders, organization, re, organization reorganized. Start browsing faster. As you can see here, reminders app's been redesigned. Um, safer browsing, faster in Safari. Extend your desktop with your iPad, as you can see here. So as you can see here, special creativity with the Apple Pencil, so you can use, so when you use your Mac, some of the Mac apps in the sidecar or on your iPad, you can do this, which looks pretty cool. So I think more apps are going to get support over time, so make your mark on your Mac, 
with your iPad. Powerful apps. So these are what they're supporting in sidecar to use the Apple Pencil. Screen time now on Mac. So how screen time was on the iPhone now, it's all on Mac now. Communication limits. So you, it's got more security so you can control what the little ones do on the computer. Combine limits. One more minute. <coughs> Increase security, greater privacy. Adobe Reader. Decode system volume. So it talks about the Apple T T2 security chip that keeps your Mac secure by ensuring that while it's running trusted software, you're automatically encrypting your your stored data. It also provides secure authentic authentication for Touch ID and secure payments for App for Apple Pay. And uh, I'm shocked that none of them have the uh, Face ID yet. Dedicated system runs on its own, read-only volume, separate from all other data on your Mac. So it talks about iCloud, Find Me iPhone, so you can use your uh, Find Me app, sorry, so you can use your can, products to find your missing ones, so you can use the find. So you can locate a missing Mac, even if it's online or sleeping, by sending out Bluetooth signals that can be detected by Apple devices in nearby. It's also enormous end-to-end -end encrypt, so no one, including Apple, knows to identify and report to the device. Sorry, I'm just going for a really quick. As you can see there, the MacBook. <laughs> Improve with Apple Watch, so you can use your Apple Watch for security login and stuff. Interesting voice control, you can use a voice control to control applications, which I'm pretty sure most Macs have had this these, but it's, it's improved, it's... You can control more things, so if you have a disability, it's easier to control. You use your Mac, which is good. You can sign up and get the software beta, but I wouldn't. So here's your compatibility for your Macs. You'd have a MacBook 2005 and later, iMac 2012 and later, MacBook Air 2012 and later, iMac Pro 2017 and later, MacBook Pro 2012 and later, iMac. Mac Pro 13 2000 or later, but your older Macs can run it if But these Macs can run it I believe If you update the, to the metal support CPU and the Mac mini 2012 later So this is probably the, my favourite part of the video right here. The new Mac Pro. What Apple diehard fans have been d dying for. For years. They took Apple took something away away from Pro users back in 2013. With the release of the trash can of the iMac. One of the things that people loved with the Mac Pro. Was to upgrade it over time. So you didn't have to buy a new one every year. Or to give it a longer life. Well, this machine has brought it back, as we'll have a look. It's the most configurable Mac you can. So, power to change everything. So, this is a. You can also see it in AR and watch the film. So, an interesting design. This is how it's sort of going back to some of the classic design Macs. If you look at it, you've got the handles from the the Power G3, G4 Mac. Um, you have the twist top pull off case of the Apple G4 Cube. Um, the metal design from the G5 and Pro models. Um, yes, but it's a very it's very nice. It's quite interesting. I'm curious to see um, how it cools, how it runs, functional. As you see, you've got two uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, I believe. As you can see, components, you can, you've got all the PCI, you can have... This machine is over fucking kill. Sorry, but it has up to 28 cores of power. So you probably use this for the next 10, 15 years, really. There's your CPU. SATA. Looks like a USB there. So engineering to go all out, all time, squeezing performance out of 300 watts. 
So forget everything you know about memory. So it has up to 2933 MHz DDR4 ECC memory, up to 140 gig memory bandwidth, six channel memory system. But I'll read this section because you'll be very interested to hear this. A multi-core workstation processor needs a lot of memory to feed it, featuring six channels of super-fast ECC memory and 12 physical DIMM slots. The new Mac Pro supports up to 1.5 terabytes of memory. That is a lot of memory. <laughs> like, ridiculous. So, Pro is working on, on with large projects, analyzing huge data sets, running multiple Pro applications can make fast work out of all kinds of work. And while typical towers cram memory hard to reach places, the Mac Pro utilizes a two-side logic board, making it easy to access. So, 28 core, 56 threads, 2.5, 4.4 gig turbo boost, and 6.5 megabytes cache. 24 has 48 threads, 2.7 gigahertz, 4.4 turbo boost, 57 megabytes cache. 16 core, 32 threads, 3.2 gigahertz, 4.4 turbo boost, 38 megabytes cache. 12 core, 24 threads, 3.3 gigahertz space, 4.4 gigahertz turbo boost, 3.125 megabytes cache. 16 threads, 3.5 gigahertz base, 4. Point gigahertz turbo boost, and 24.5 megabytes cache. And these are applications that you're probably going to use in the machine. So you've got Auto, Autodesk Maya, Logic Pro 10, Build Time, and Adobe Photoshop CC. So it's 4, 28 core. Um, so it has a, a 4.2 faster Anoid render. 28 core, 18 core Mac Pro, 2.7 inch previous gen, 12 core Mac Pro baseline. So it is whoppingly quick. Logic Pro, 5 point times more amp designer plugins, 28 core, 18 core, previous 12 core baseline. Build time, 3.1% faster. As you can see here, it's ridiculous. It's, over, it's quick. 4.2% faster. Has eight PCI Express expansion slots, so you can configure with different graphics cards. Hopefully, you can use Nvidia and many other because you because over time you're going to be updating components to make it run quicker. So there might be a newer graphics card rather than what Apple are putting in there in the next two or three times. So you got half slot, and you got single wide slots down here, which is good. Also, it's got two SATA. There, so you might be able to put like a SATA drive or something in by the look of it. Extreme by design, the Vega Pro graphics, which is going to be beast. The second connector in an indus industry first, so you got the MPX connector up to 4.7 watts power, so power is coming from these connectors. Extended PCI Express 16 up to 75 watts, Thunderbolt 3 up to. 40 gig data transfer, so it has the Ray Radeon Pro Vega 2 graphics up to 14 terif teraflops, the Infinity Fabric Link up to 5% faster data transfer. So that, so you get, so it has so the the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo plus power with up to 14 teraflops of computer performance, 32 gig of memory and one terabyte of memory bandwidth. The MPX module with the Radeon Pro Vega 2 is a powerhouse. Four more power, two Radeon Pro Vega 2 GPUs combined to create the Vega 2 Duo with double the graphics performance, memory and memory bandwidth in the world's most powerful graphics card. The two GPUs are connected through the Affinity Fabric Link which allows data transferred up to five times faster between the GPUs. It's huge for apps that are optimized for multiple GPUs. So you could actually buy it and use it to mine, use it as a mining rig to, to mine um, cryptocurrencies. You probably could do that. This machine is that powerful. The world's most powerful graphics card times two. But you wouldn't want to use it for that. You wouldn't use it for editing. And to me, if I bought one of these, if I had the money, it, I'd probably have it for about tw 10 to 15 years. Because... So the four GP, so taking power one step further, the new Mac Pro supports configuration of two Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo MPX modules. The four GPUs combined to add up to 56 terabytes 
teraflops and 128 gig of high bandwidth memory. It's a massive amount of performance build to tackle everything from the GPU rendering to the machine learning. I know I'm sorry. I know you people are going to hate Apple. A lot of people hate Apple, but I feel this machine for Apple is a step in the right direction. And I'm going to say this: it's about fucking time. People have been dying for this machine for for five five or so years. Cool, quite capable. And a lot of people will just be, will be buying the older generation of uh, Mac Pro, the 2012 variant, because because how much. Because it was just more upgradable, and it can run the modern Mac OSs if you get the uh, Metal Three, the Metal Three uh, graphics card in it. See, these are the optional graphics cards so far. You got the the Vega Two Duo, the the Vega Two, and the Radeon Pro Five Eighty X, which tells you five point six terabot teraflop single precision, eight gig of DDR five memory, two point two hundred fifty six gigabyte of memory bandwidth. And there you go. And there, there, there's and there's your specs for the the Vega Pros. It'd be, it'd be it's overkill really. And you got Maxon Cinema 4D the render. Two point times faster. Three D performance. And also introducing an Apple Afterburner Blaze through 8K video created to transform the workflow. Video and video afterburner allows you to go straight from the camera to the timeline and work natively with 4K and 8K files from the start. No more time-consuming transcoding storage overhead. So that takes um that takes some of the video files from the uh off and more tasks off the CPU and puts it on this chip so you can do more with that system as well. And there's a new Apple the monitor that goes with it. Straight up to Three 8K ProRes RAW videos at three at uh, 30 frames per second, up to 12 4K ProRes RAW, at 30%, 16 4K ProRes, 4.2 frame two video at 30 frames per second. Security taken to a new height, so it has a the T2W chip, um, up to four terabytes of storage in a array. I'm guessing two ter so it's two terabytes in an array. I'm guessing. Powerful I.O. at hand, it is very powerful. Rear expansion, there's your expansion slots. Um, I'm pretty sure it comes with the I.O. card. It has has a shit ton of um, Thunderbolt 3 plus 2 USB-A. Top, there's the top of the case. You can use the AR on your iPhone if you use Safari to get an idea of what it'll look like. And that's the new monitor. Which I'll have a quick look at. It is a beast of a thing, which to be honest I wouldn't buy with it. As much as it's a cool monitor. It has its own cooling. It has four Thunderbolts. So it has it takes the dynamic range to the extreme. 100 nits. 16,000 nits. It is a beast of a screen. Like, it is a beast. 10 depth color depth. P3 wide color gamut. So it has a beautiful color. LED in a whole new light. As you can see, the LED, light mixing and shaping, color transformation sheet, micro lens array, and the, the, the chip that makes it all possible. So there you so that's your 4K, 5K Mac, and there's your 6K. It is huge. So it has a 6K, Retina 6K display. So it has more uh, graphics than the iMac. It is. It is a beast of a machine. I've got to admit though, the only negative I have, you've got to pay, pay for the stand and stuff. But I'm glad it includes a micro cl mi uh, microfiber cloth in the box because um, it will do a bit of work. But it is, an, it is a very nice machine. You can turn it sideways. You get a mount, you can have it as a mount. It is a nice machine, it really is. 
I think that's probably the best thing Apple have put for computer wise in the last, I don't know, six to eight years because it's just a beast. It is. Yeah, it's the beast. And this might actually bring people from going to hack and rush back to Apple. I think they've I think they've finally got their head out of their ass and listened to the customers. Because it's so one thing pro pro customers wanted was something to upgradable. It's even more powerful than a iMac Pro, so So I'm gonna end this video now. I just want to say thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more video content and I will make another one in the coming weeks when I get a new, the the beta for iOS on um on the uh, on the iPad and also might be having a look at updating the server to macOS Mojave or the new one depending on on how that works because um it is an out of support iMac but I'm thinking about at the moment it's running a uh, high Sierra and that seems to be doing all my server server tasks fine. So, radio, bye for now, and I'll see you in the next video.